Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another edition of Pro Wrestling Talk, brought to you by Blitzball Champ Gaming. I'm your host, Blitzball Champ Jason Ingram, coming at you here on the U to the Tube. Now, finally, finally after a few days, finally finished watching Cyber Fight Festival 2022 on Wrestle Universe. Whew. Six hours of content. Goodness gracious. But I just wanted to get get on here and just uh, do a little bit of a recap and just give my thoughts uh, overall on the matches. There were 14 matches on this big, ginormous card called Cyber Fight Festival 2022. Like, wowzers. And most of the matches were at least like over 10 minutes long uh, with some of them being like about probably 16, 17, or even 20 minutes long. But anyway, let's let's go through them. So first off, so there were three pre-show matches which they did broadcast the uh, pre-show matches. But the first one was a tag team match. It was Muscle Sakai and Yuki Onaya versus Soma Takayo and Kazuki Hirata. Um, Kazuki Hirata did a lot of talk on the mic, even before and during, during the match. So I guess I guess that's his thing. But um, it was a pretty decent match. You know, aside from the loads of talking, it was it was a pretty decent match. But Muscle Sakai and Yuki Onaya got the victory. They came out on top by uh, pinfall. But yeah, not a bad match to start off. It's actually pretty good. Next, The next pre-show match, we had a 10-woman tag team match, which was uh, the team of Nao Kakuda, Mahiro Kuryu, Moka Miyamoto, Aris, Risu Endo, and Kaya Toribami. Versus Hyper Misao Yuki Ainyo, Raku, Palm Harajuku, and Haruna Neko. I was definitely rooting for Hyper Misao's team. Um, it was definitely um, good to see Palm Harajuku. She had a lot of action in this match. Um, so did um, Arisa Endo. But uh, the team of Arisa Endo... Arisa Endo um, Kaya Toribama, Toribami, Moka Miyamoto, Mahiro Kuryu, and now, now Kakuda got the victory. So that first team got the victory. Um, about same, same length as the first one, but still a pretty, pretty good match. Just I felt like there were certain ladies that were showcased more than others, but it was, it was a decent match. It was just a lot. There was just a lot going on. And then the final pre-show match was a six six person tag match, which was um, the team of Eruption, which is um, Yukio Sa Sakaguchi, Saki Akai, and Hideki ok Oktani versus uh, Ken Otka, Yuna Manase, and Mizuki Watase. Um, and this... This was actually this was actually kind of surprising, um, surprising ending that is, but uh, eruption actually got the victory. Um, it was actually by technical, I guess by knockout. But yeah, that was actually a pretty surprising ending for that match. But it was. I would say it was definitely the best match out of the three pre-show matches, for sure. Definitely. But, um, a lot of these names not too familiar with, other than um, Hideki Okutani and Yuna Manase. But, which, you know, I after seeing this event, some of the folks that I've seen, like in a previous Noah event, started to become a little bit more familiar and refresh my memory. 
and that's two examples. But it was definitely the best of the three pre-show matches, for sure. But Eruption got the victory. Okay, and then it gets into the main card. <coughs> the main card starts off with a tag team match. Kenya Okada and Kai Fujimura versus Toi Kojima and Yuya Kuroko. Which, um, Okada and Fujimura got the victory uh, via submission. But it was, it was a pretty decent tag match. Definitely a pretty decent tag match. Um, this next one uh, definitely was a match I thoroughly enjoyed. And this was a six-woman tag team match as Juya Nagano, Miyu Yamashita, and Maki Ito uh, went up against Hikari Noah, Suzume, and Yuki Arai. So a J Tokyo Joshi Pro Wrestling um, featured match. Um, all six of these, these ladies were pretty awesome. Um, definitely like Hikari Noah, Yuki Arai, really, really cool. Um, Julia Nagano, I started to, you know, like her after, um, I remember she had a match. She was an opponent for Miyu Yamashita at one point, and she actually put up a great fight, so it was really cool to see her and, um, Miyu Yamashita and Maki Ito work together. I, I definitely like that squad. And sure enough, they ended up winning uh, by pinfall. Uh, Maki Ito, Miyu Yamashita, and um, Juria Nagano. Uh, it was a great match. Definitely a match I enjoyed. Like I said, familiar with, with each of those ladies. So I definitely was able to connect more with this match compared to some of the others. <clears throat> this next match, this, ne this next match I could have done without happening <laughs> it was a eight person tag team match where the pheromones oh god made up of yuki sexy ino yumito yumehito fantastic imanari danshoku dandy dino and akito kochin um nishigaki went up against the team of shinya aoki Sanshiro Takaki, Yumiko Hota, and Kendo Kashin. Oh, man. I could have really done without this match, as it was... Uh, the So the Pheromones are a very flamboyant team. And they did the kind of moves that are pretty disgusting. They ended up winning the match by submission, and it was not a great-looking submission at all. It was actually kind of really, really weird. I mean, I get the flamboyancy. I get the whole idea. I mean, that's their gimmick. But, oh my god. I hadn't seen that in, like, a while. So, that kind of caught me off guard. <laughs> um... Dan Shoku Dino is is uh, one that I'm fam I'm familiar with. So when I saw that he was part of this this team, I was just like, oh god. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the pheromones got the victory. Uh, this next one was definitely one of my favorite matches on the card. Um, this was a fatal four way uh, for the number one contendership to the Princess of Princess Championship. The four ladies were Rika Tatsumi, Mizuki, Yuki Kamifuku, and Miyu Watanabe. Um, I've been starting to grow more on Miyu Watanabe, and she actually did a giant swing uh, with two of the ladies, which I thought was really cool. Um, Yuki Kamifuku, I mean, she's, she's gorgeous. Um... Mizuki, um, one half of the Magical Sugar Rabbits with uh, Yuka Sakazaki, and it's also a Princess, a Princess Tag Team Champion with uh, Yuka Sakazaki. And then Rika Tatsumi, who I definitely uh, recently became a fan of. She's really good. She's really good. And speaking of which, um, Rika Tatsumi ended up getting the victory. Uh, she did one of those flying... Uh, top turnbuckle hip attacks she she likes to do hip attacks 
But she was able to get the victory, and Rika Tatsumi is your new number one contender to the Princess of Princess Championship. But yeah, definitely one of my favorite matches on the card. Let's see. We had another 10-man tag match, as this was, this was actually pretty entertaining. So this was the team of Timothy Thatcher, Simon Gotch, Rene Dupree, um, El Hijo de Dr. Wagner Jr., and Unbreakable Michael Elgin versus the team of Takashi Sugeria, Ka Kazu Kazuyuki Fujita, Masa Kitamiya, Daiki Inaba, and Shuhei Taniguchi. And you know what's interesting? This is the first time I've seen Michael Elgin wrestle in a good long while. So it was kind of cool to see him wrestle again. Because, I mean, I'm used to seeing him back when he was part of um, Ring of Honor. Which I've actually seen him live before back in Ring of Honor. And, of course, you know, Timothy Thatcher, you know, was recently used to be with uh, WWE via NXT. Um, and of course, uh, Rene Dupree was part of La Resistance from a long time ago. And Simon Gotch, I remember the last time I saw Simon Gotch, I believe was in a ROH ring. So it was good to see, see those familiar faces. And sure enough, they got the victory. Um, Michael Elgin hit an Elgin bomb and, uh, sealed the deal for his team. But yeah, it was a great match. Definitely was a great match. And it was just good to see those familiar faces again. Okay, next up we had a eight-person tag match. So it was the teams of um, Disaster Box, uh, which is Harashima and Naomi Yoshimura, and the CDK, uh, which is Masahiro Takanashi and Chris Brooks, uh, went up against the team of Shunma... Katsumata, Yuki Ueno, and Mao, and Asuka slash Vinny. Um, I'm familiar with Chris Brooks. I know I've seen him on um, Gato Move, uh, aka Choco Pro Wrestling, quite a bit. Um, I've also, I'm also familiar with Asuka, aka Vinny, because I've seen her also on Gato Move. Um, I've also seen her on uh, AEW when they had that uh, that women's tournament, and I actually I actually really enjoyed Vinny. She was she was awesome, and I was hoping her team would win, but it was the Disaster Box and the CDK that got the victory. But man, I really wanted Vinny's team to win. Vinny slash Oscar that is, because she is really good in the ring. Next up, we had uh, another six-man tag team match as RVD, Rob Van Dam, teamed up with uh, Stinger, which is made up of Yoshinari Ogawa and Hayata, and they went up against Kaito, Kiyomiya, Daisuke Harada, and Yohei, which, I tell you, you know, Rob Van Dam's getting older but he still is in pretty dang on good shape to be doing the stuff he's been doing. And and sure enough, he did his thing in Pro Wrestling Noah. I was, I was impressed. I was definitely impressed. And sure enough, did the deed. Got that five-star frog splash. And his team picked up the win. Never would have thought I'd see Rob Van Dam in a Pro Wrestling Noah ring. Or, you know, yet alone Cyber Fight Festival. But hey, definitely was good to see him. And I've met him before. I've met him. So he can still get it done. Okay, next up, we had a six-man tag match. It was the team of Katsuhiko Nakajima, Atushi Kotoge, and um, Yosh Yoshiki Inamura versus the team of Burning, which is made up of Tetsuya Endo and Jun Akiyama, and Kazusara Higuchi. Now, this was this was unfortunate because this match actually ended very early. Um, 
due to referee stoppage. Um, I believe it was uh, Nakajima hit a slap. I think it was on um, Kazusada Higuchi. He hit a really hit him with a powerful slap and just flat out knocked him out. Knocked him senseless, knocked him loopy. And the referee checked on him, and with a matter of moments, referee called for the bell. Referee stoppage. Um, Jun Akiyama kind of got in the got in the dude's face, but yeah, like it looked it looked like a legit. I don't know if it was like a legit. He got knocked unconscious, but referee stopped that match. I don't I don't even think that match was five minutes. So, that one ended, like, early. So, you, you hate to see stuff like that happen. But, yeah, it looked like he got knocked unconscious. Just, it was crazy because it was a slap. But I guess, you know, it was a hard enough slap. It can do that. That's apparently proof. Um... This next match was my favorite match of the entire card. This was the um, hardcore no disqualification match. Kano versus Daisuke Sasaki. Um, this was back and forth. Um, definitely enjoyed this match. We saw ladders. We saw tables. We even saw the use of a cattle prod. And um, thumbtacks. Golden thumbtacks. Like, this match was insane. And I loved it. And sure enough, uh, Kano... Kanoa got the um, got the victory in this match, but man, it was an incredible match. It, it was probably the longest match, I would say, on the card, and it was definitely my favorite. These two tore each other up. Very well booked. Okay, and then we had our um, we had two title matches. Uh, one was the co-main event. This was. Uh, for the Princess of Princess Championship, as uh, the champion, the big kaiju, Shoko Nakajima, defended against the magical girl, Yuka Sakazaki, also one half of the magical sugar rabbits with Mizuki. Um, both had incredible entrances, by the way. There were, a lot of, there were actually a lot of great entrances on each of the stars that participated. But... This was definitely a great match. Um, definitely back and forth. Um, there was even a moment where Yuka went for a suplex and uh, Shoko Nakajima, she didn't... Or no, she went for a brain buster. And she didn't land on her head. She kind of twisted and landed on her feet. And I remember Yuka would kind of had that, that what the heck just happened look on her face. Yuka's, Yuka's awesome. I love Yuka Sakazaki. I've seen her live once before. She is incredible. I hope I get a chance to meet her. I would love to meet Yuka Sakazaki. Um, anyway, great match. And this is, this is a interesting uh, story behind this because actually the last time Yuka Sakazaki became Princess of Princess Champion, she defeated Shoko Nakajima for that title. And the thing is, if she would have won this match, she would have been the only other woman to have won that title three times. Right now, Miyu um, Yamashita, the pink striker, um, is the only one that holds the record of uh, three-time Princess of Princess Champion in uh, Tokyo Joshi Pro Wrestling. But... Um, Shoko Nakajima was able to get the victory, hit the diving senton, got the one, two, three. Great match between both these ladies. Definitely like both of them. And then the main event was for the GHC Heavyweight Championship as the champion Go Shizaki defended against Mr. Cozy Lariat himself, Satoshi Kojima. Uh, definitely back and forth, hard hitting match. And when it was all said and done, kind of a shocking uh, ending. I did not expect this to happen, but Satoshi Kojima pulled it off, hit the running lariat, got the one, two, three, and became GHC 
heavyweight champion. I was really su I was really surprised. I did not expect that at all. Did not expect that. So, um, congratulations to him. So, had a title change. Main event had a title change. So, that's what's up. And then, uh, the other big main thing that happened. My favorite wrestler of all time. Keiji Muto, alias the Great Muda, came out and announced that spring of 2023, he will be hanging up his boots. He will be retiring, which at that time, he will be 60 years old. And he also announced that he is going to have five more matches. Five more matches before he retires. So I'm pretty sure those matches are going to be very well spaced out between now and in spring of 2023. But you know something? I'm not surprised. I mean, at the end of end of this year, in December, he turned 60. So, I mean, it's the, it's the right call. I mean, he's getting up there in age. Definitely, I think he's, he's earned it. He's definitely earned it. One of the great Japanese legends in Keiji Muto. Um, definitely watched him a lot growing up, you know, as the great Muda. But yeah, I do hope, however, that one of those five matches is against Sting. Whether it's actually whether he teams up with Sting or goes against Sting, I hope Sting is included. I really, really do. I would love to relive that one more time before... KG Muto retires. So hopefully when Sting comes back from injury, hopefully that can happen. I would love to see that. Would totally love to see that. Um as far as anybody else, I mean, it's kind of up in the air, but you know, I'm just you know, he's my all-time favorite pro wrestler. I got a chance to meet him at WrestleCade a few years ago, which was, oh, which was a big deal for me. But you know what? You know, Keiji Muto is a legend. One of the greats to come out of Japan. So, can't wait to see what's next for him. You know, what these five matches will be. And just what he ends up doing post-retirement. You know? So, should be great. Should be really great. But, that is concludes cyber cyber fight festival 2022 like i said 14 matches and the the whole stream was like over six hours so it i had to watch this in segments because man that's a lot to cover that was a lot to cover but it was good it was just a whole lot but anyway that's pretty much it uh for this video um let me know what y'all thought uh did y'all watch Cyber Fight Festival 2022? Did you enjoy it? What were your favorite matches? Um, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And thank you so much for watching. Um, for another episode of Pro Wrestling Talk, brought to you by Blitzball Champ Gaming, I'm your host, Blitzball Champ Jason Ingram. Hope everybody has a blessed day tomorrow, and I will see y'all soon. Laters.